I'm going to talk about mass shootings in this video in a way that will probably piss off politically polarized people from both ends of the political spectrum. You'd have to be blind not to see the sharp increase in mass shootings over the last 10 years. You know, sure, political groups love to massage statistics, and I believe they're doing that. But even acknowledging that politically motivated statistical gymnastics are taking place, it just can't explain away all the death we've seen in the last 10 years, particularly when it comes to young killers and children being the target of these shootings. Seeing people, especially children, murdered at an alarming rate just absolutely breaks your heart. Being humans, though, our sadness quickly turns to anger. As this confusion and sadness turns to anger, we're inundated with news media and politicians yelling a diatribe of anger and hate towards what they consider to be the real killer, the most sinister of all inanimate objects, the gun. You know, these fiery sermons that these people put on are powerful enough to convince people that the murderers are actually not at fault. The gun is. But who's at fault or what's at fault for these mass shootings and why? When I was in high school in the 1980s in Southern California, a lot of pickup trucks had gun racks in the back window. Probably seen that if you're old enough too. And those gun racks were often full of guns during hunting season. A lot of students would go hunting after school, especially during the dove season. And guns were as unthreatening as a chair back then. Almost everyone I knew had a gun in their home. And gun laws were extremely lax back then. There were no background checks, safety training, or safe storage requirements back then. You know, as a matter of fact, most people didn't even have gun safes. They locked it in a chest or drawer or put it in their nightstand or even maybe even had a gun tucked under their pillow back then. Yet, there was less than one mass shooting a year and there was no mass school shootings. When we saw shootings on the news back then, it was always part of the growing inner city gang problems that were just in their infancy then. These charts right here show how more households own guns in the past than they do today. Gun ownership per household dropped by 28% between the mid-70s and 2021. As a percentage, more people own guns in the past. Also be mindful that there was little to no gun regulation back then. In this chart, shows mass shootings by year. If you correlate the frequency of mass shootings versus gun ownership, it's easy to see that mass shootings went way up as gun ownership went way down. In fact, mass shootings and gun violence went up as gun control got much stricter and less guns were in households. Knowing these facts, how can we blame the gun? It's easy to prove that guns aren't the problem and that gun control doesn't work to stop mass shootings. So what is the problem? Well, people are the problem. More specifically, today's societal norms and culture are probably the problem. When I compare our culture in, let's say, 1985 to our culture in 2023, the differences are profound and not in a good way either. About 10 years ago, the woke movement started, um, and this was a new cultural revolution focused on things like identity politics, class warfare, uninhibited sexual boundaries, the vilification of the family, and social justice. We've become politically polarized, emotionally insecure, sexually confused, and we've regressed into a state of perpetual victimhood. If you've watched my Hunt Cat Mail episodes over the years, I repeatedly state that we're normalizing mental illness. Literally every time I go outside here in California, I'm reminded of that. We say it's fine for somebody to identify as a cat. 
We encourage young children to get sex changes. We pretend male athletes are females. And we ignore people standing in the middle of the street talking to themselves naked. <laughs> Guns are definitely not the issue with society. This psychological free-for-all that we created is the problem. Mental illness is probably at the core of our problems. And not only have we normalized mental illness, but we're encouraging it at a very early age. And this has had disastrous results. You know, you, you can't keep convincing everyone that they're hopeless victims of everything. Then have the media enrage them on a daily basis and not expect them to lash out at society when they finally have a mental breakdown. This morally and psychologically inverted world that we fabricated is creating killers. And our public schools are becoming the mental illness factories that manufacture this behavior. We blame poverty on racism, drug abuse on capitalism, and murder on guns. We created a society where nobody is responsible or accountable for their actions, you know, as long as they identify with the correct political ideology anyway. Add to this the loneliness and isolation these people feel because their only friends are fake pseudo friends on social media, which means that they've developed no real social skills when it comes to physically interacting with other people. You know, they, they've created a self-imposed prison. The people doing these mass shootings are planning and preparing for it before they do it. And they're fully aware that they die at the end of the story. So in essence, they're committing an elaborate form of suicide that allows them to make a statement and garner national attention. Many of them even leave behind notes or manifestos so we can sympathize with them. So my conclusion is that society is actually manufacturing killers by normalizing and encouraging mental illness. The people doing these horrible things are obviously convinced that their actions are justified and they feel this way because that mentality was encouraged over their lifetime. Look at the recent shooting in Nashville where the media sympathized with the killer and the trans community labeled her as a hero. I mean, how crazy is that? But if you look back after the woke revolution, mental illness among young people became an epidemic. You'll also notice that this chart correlates with the mass shootings chart. This is not a coincidence. And yes, we are spending huge sums of money on mental health in, a, in the United States, much more than any other disease or ailment. So funding is not the issue here. The medical community isn't making progress because they're ignoring the root cause of this mental illness in order to cater to the politically correct establishment. And when people do seek help, American psychiatry has resorted to convincing everybody that they're victims of something rather than helping them take responsibility for their lives. You know, telling a drug addict that it's not your fault does no good. You know, convincing people that they're victims causes them to lash out at other people. <laughs> you know, we need to take a realistic look at our culture in America. We need to see what changes took place 10 or 11 years ago, and we need to reverse that. All hunters and responsible gun owners know that we're responsible for every bullet that leaves that muzzle. We're rational enough to understand that guns don't just sneak out of our safes <laughs> and go on shooting sprees. Per people murder other people, not guns. So I believe I demonstrated that guns don't cause mass shootings because there were more guns in households and less gun laws in the past, yet there were no mass shootings. 
Until we change our culture as a nation, I don't think it'll get any better. Until we start looking at mental illness as mental illness, the killers among us will go unnoticed and will undoubtedly create more.